Good day to you, everyone. How are ya? Um, my dog is settling down. That's a good thing. Um, I'm expecting a couple of deliveries today, so my dog might go nuts, and that 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 could be interesting. So we'll look forward to that if it happens. Um, I hope this day finds you well. Uh, I am I am heading to Los Angeles tomorrow to uh, to do a couple of things. Um, and, uh, so today is just sort of insane. I'm trying to get everything done before I go and I still haven't packed and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, anyway, such problems. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about getting older and how that, how we can approach our voiceover careers with that fact in mind, because it is a fact. Um, it is an inevitability um, if we are all so fortunate um, for it to be. Um, <clears throat> of course, before we really start in earnest, I would love it if you would just let me know that you're here. That's always a nice um, moment for me uh, to see your names. And uh, hi, John. Lunch with Kay. Listening while driving. Okay, I will try my best not to make you laugh <laughs> or... <laughs> and subsequently crash. Um, <coughs> eyes on the road, eyes on the ro <coughs> road. Oh my gosh. Here, let me just get this little cough out. Um, I am having an espresso. It's actually decaf because I've had a little bit too much caffeine already this morning. Uh, so uh, let's see, I saw somebody else there. Jeff, Tammy, hello from Washington. Hi, John Malone. Getting older with each passing moment, isn't that the truth? Every morning, uh, I'm reminded. <laughs> um, so, you know, I hope that this uh, topic isn't just of interest to people who are like, you know, 50 and older, um, because I think in order to really approach aging with perspective and, uh, you know, good emotional and mental health, we have to really start grasping the, uh, the idea when we're young and, uh, and feeling quite vital and invincible. Uh, that's, that's the time to start appreciating every uh, day that you have and every opportunity that you have because of where you are in your life, right? Uh, and I think that's probably the main thrust here to me and how I have approached um, aging and in particular aging with regard to my career because they are connected. I mean, how you age in your life is directly, you know, connected to how you, uh, how you age in your career. Um, and so let us start with that because it really begins with a sense of gratitude, you know, for where we are and what we currently possess. Even if you are in the midst of a struggle, because I am telling you, it is the struggle that provides opportunity for learning and for growth. I speak from experience. I'm living the experience as we speak. Um, and so gratitude and being present, living presently. I have a, I have had a pattern in my life of both, you know, at various, at various times, sometimes at the same time in a very strange way of looking back to what was and wishing that I had it again. Of course, that's not possible. And looking forward into uh, a, a sort of a fantasy that doesn't exist, doesn't exist. And it is true. I mean, there's, this is going to be full of a lot of cliches, but it is true that we don't have the future and we don't have the past. It, the, all we have is now. And so what is our, uh, what is our uh, approach to being present and being here right now? 
And I do not in any way uh, pretend that that is an easy thing to grasp, particularly if you are in the midst of suffering and in the midst of something difficult and at a crossroads and all the things, you know. Um, but, but a solid, you know, a solid perspective on aging requires our current presence right now. So uh, let me start there. And the, I mean, the, these, these are all the sort of surrounding things, right, that aren't quite specific to voiceover, but they are, they are pivotal because we have to be mindful of our health. We must take care of ourselves. And, th that, and that's, not a, that's not a vanity issue. That's a, that's a, how do you feel when you get out of bed in the morning issue? Because if, you, if you're not eating well and you are not uh, exercising and taking care of your heart and taking care of your muscles and your, um, your bones and your tendons, it's not going to feel good to get up in the morning. And if you don't feel good getting up in the morning, you're not, you're not going to be adaptable to what the day presents. And the thing about aging is, and in particular to voiceover, is that we have to adapt. We have to adapt. Right? And so we want to be our, uh, in our best mental, emotional, physical, spiritual shape. And um, so those things are all really important. Um, I myself, you know, I do, I do work out, but I, it, you know, it's hard for me because I'm a three-toed sloth. That's how I move through my life, believe it or not. I just am very slow moving. I'd rather take a nap. I like to sleep, I, you know. So I have to be super conscious and very intentional about moving my body, which is good for your lungs, which is good for your voice. And all these things are truly connected, right? So there's that aspect of it. Um, taking good care of yourself um, physically, uh, including eating and exercise. Um, and, oh, I feel, a, I feel a delivery person close by, which means my dog is going to bark. Ah, maybe you could be quiet and calm down. Oh, my gosh. Um, so not just um, what you eat and how much you move, but also whether you're getting enough sleep, uh, your emotional health. I'm a big fan of therapy. I have to say it. I, I just am. Um, and then taking care of your spiritual life, whatever that means. Stop, there it is. Stop, stop, stop. Come here. You got to calm down. I'm going to try to keep her calm. It's not going to be easy, my friends. It's going to be, it's going to be loud. It's going to be messy. Um, so, so there's that piece of it. Then with regard to, um, with regard to our actual, you know, careers and, um, and how we, how we face loss, because that's really what it is in voiceover. In, in any job setting, really, to a certain degree, but in voiceover, you know, advertising is very fresh and young and hip and new and all those things. And there, there is a time when we are the it people. It's our time, it's our generation. You know, and that happens really when we're in our, it starts in our 20s and it goes through our, our mid 40s and it shifts shifts in our late 40s and 50s, and it's really different in our 60s and beyond. Because we aren't, you know, some of us at 50 can still do 30, you know, because our voices really don't change all that much. Um, but I can't, like, I can't real, I'm 60, I can't realistically do 25. That's, that's ridiculous. And it's a ridiculous thought that I, it's, it's, you know, it's not even something to consider. It's not real. I would be inauthentic. And authenticity is the game in this business, right? So there's a sense in which we um, we have to be prepared for the shifts, not just not just in terms of how people approach us in the business, but what the business actually is. Because I am of a particular, I'm not just of a particular age. Um, I'm of a particular culture that doesn't exist anymore, right? Um, and that, that's the truth. And so it, 
20 year olds, people in their 20s and 30s, they live in a different world than I did in my 20s and 30s. It's a different world. And that has a tremendous effect on the types of reads that we do. Um, and so we have to keep that in mind too, that it's not just us aging, it's time moving and the culture changing and shifting. So in a certain sense, we don't, we don't belong to it anymore. We don't, it's not ours. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm divorced. I'm fresh out of a, a, a long-term relationship. I, I see people, uh, you know, walking around town in their twenties and thirties and they're in love and they're so beautiful. You know, they're, they're, I mean, like truly they're beautiful people, but they're also beautiful because they're in love and there's something so, um, so sweet about it. it it's, it's, and, and it, and there's also a, uh, a, a sense in which I kind of go, Oh, <laughs> you know, like they're in some way, shape or form, they're in for something, you know, because that moment, that thing that changes. I don't care if you uh, were, you know, fantastically in love and got fantastically married, uh, uh, married and have a fantastic marriage. It shifts and it changes and it isn't what it was when it began, right? But I, I, I do my best to look at that, at those people that I see, right? That I'm really hyper aware of at this moment in my life, right? And I look and I say, I had my time and I did. I had my time. I had my twenties and I had my thirties and I was in love like that. And I, you know, and it's their turn. It's their turn. And so I try to approach that in my personal life, right? Like with a sense of gratitude for what I have experienced in this life, like the, like the true blessing of experiencing the fullness of life, uh, including all the good and all the heartache and all of that. It's a privilege, honest to God, it's a privilege. And so it's that same principle that I think that we have to apply to, um, to our voiceover work. When we look and say, oh, that's what they're hiring now. Oh, that's what they're doing now. And if you've been at voiceover for a while, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's a good thing to cultivate that sense of, yes, I was there once. The job I got at age 30, which was life-changing for me, was life-changing for the person who had to give it up. Because that's what happens when, we, when we're cast. You know, you, you land a, a, a big campaign of some kind. Well, the, unless the business is brand new, somebody else w had that campaign. And so they're going through a shift, right? And, um, and we will all, hopefully, we all get to experience those things, the fullness of those things, right? And so, uh, um, so, it really is about approaching your life and your career, specifically your career, with gratitude for what you have done, what you've been able to do, the gift that you possess that has allowed you to work in this business, right? That's core. That's fundamental to being able to age gracefully through your career. The, the next piece of it is that I think rather than say, uh, oh, I'm not right for those things anymore. I'm not right for that anymore. Uh, I don't get cast for those things anymore. They've moved on from my type. You know, that, that sort of a, it's not mine, it's not mine, it's not mine. I don't get to do it anymore. That sort of approach, which, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, it's discouraging, right? Um, but rather we say, what right now uh, works for me? What right now do I excel at? Um, what kinds of things out there uh, uh, are, make sense for my voice and the type of person that I am and the generation that I come from. And we start approaching our work that way and looking for our work that way. And it, that provides us agency. And so we can, we can go and seek out 
instead of waiting for things to come to us and having to weed through all the things that don't, that aren't right for us, you know, that don't make sense for us anymore, that don't have our age bracket on it, that don't have our sound attached to it, right? So, so again, I'm, you know, I, I know I use myself a lot, but um, it's n nature of the beast. Um, so these days, you know, I'm, even though I'm still on some, some uh, email lists with my, with my agents that are, you know, are kind of younger, you know, and a hair on my arms drive me crazy. Um, even though I'm still on a few of those email lists, you know, I, I look at something and I go, yeah, that, that's not me. It's not me. And I can't, you know, we, we do, you know, if, if, if we're, if we're uh, agile voice actors, you know, we do have the capacity to sort of move in one direction or another, you know, a little bit. We, we, we can dance on the edges of age ranges and, and things like that. But sometimes it's just like, yeah, I don't do that very well at my age. And because I don't, um, I'm going to pass because I would have to contort myself into some position that would leave me sounding inauthentic. And I don't want to put stuff out into the world where I don't sound real and I don't sound like myself. So, so the things that I tend to read for are, you know, um, uh, healthcare, Medicare plan. I mean, this is a big time right now, open enrollment, um, you know, for Medicare and all of this supp supplemental health plans and stuff like that. Like that's completely in my wheelhouse, right? Um, things like financial institutions about retirement and savings and, you know, banking, smart banking, things that, uh, things that, uh, require a sense of wisdom. Like you've lived a little bit of life because I have, and so I can, I don't have to do anything because that just exists in me. I don't have to contort myself into any position, you know, to be able to fit the spec because I, I have lived life and I have, you know, I have learned from my mistakes and I have grown wiser and all those things, right? So, so if we, we, we can't come at it with a position of, well, I don't get to read that anymore. I don't get to do that anymore. Or, or, oh my goodness, they, all they want is a millennial read, or they want, you know, they want somebody that doesn't sound like a voice actor. Yeah. Well, then, you know, you, you, you can, t you can, you know, make use of some tips about how to, again, you know, make your diction a little bit sloppier and use a little upspeak, but that only goes so far. It's helpful to a degree, but it doesn't change who you are and what culture you grew up in and what's in your bones, you know? And so there's just a great sense of acceptance about, um, about what we, the skills that we possess, the gifts that we possess, um, and the era in which we grew up. Um, the, uh, the last thing I want to say about it is, you know, the importance of diversifying what you do in voiceover. Um, you know, in my case, again, uh, you know, uh, um, yes, I read all those, the, the, the things I just mentioned were the types of things that I read commercially um, and narration wise, you know, um, but that's not a lot because the primary, uh, the primary advertising demographic is, you know, somewhere in like 18 to, you know, 18 to 30. 18 to 35 it's I don't live there anymore you know and so most of the most of the commercials that come out are geared toward that really hyper buying you know segment of the population so you know the type of commercial work that I do is is limited now it's limited and so if I was only relying upon that it, you know it would be it, it'd be a hard road to hoe for me to keep a roof over my head Right. And so so there comes the importance of diversifying. And so by diversifying into animation, video games and dubbing, I have opened up I've opened up a, another section of my career because there are lots of uh, there are lots of older uh, uh, older roles in those genres. And um, and what do I want to say? And, oh, uh, like with regard to dubbing. So like I, I do a lot of dubbing and you know what I do? Incidental roles. Like I, I'll get booked for something and, um, 
and I'll, and I'll have, you know, it'll be a two hour session and I will do four characters in a film. And they're like, this character has three lines, this character has one, you know, this, this character has a nice juicy scene. But it's, it's, I don't, I have done principal roles in dubbing stuff, but I mostly do, um, you know, incidental roles. Pay is the same, you know, uh, but because I developed, you know, um, the ability to do dubbing work, and because I can put on another character, I hope, I hope, you know, small characters, like little shifts in my voice, not big shifts, just small enough <coughs> shifts in my voice um, that I can play a, a, a multitude of characters. Um, I opened up a whole new world for myself, right? So diversifying, diversifying, diversifying. Also in the midst of, of you know, thinking ahead about how I'm going to, what my place is in voiceover. Years ago, I started thinking about about coaching because I really love voiceover and I really love people and I really want to help people. And so that, you know, I, I, I don't want to say this too loud. Like I hope my agents aren't listening. Um, but there's a part of me that likes coaching more than voiceover because it's, it's so gratifying. You know, I really enjoy helping people. And so I imagine there will come a day when voiceover is, secondary and coaching is primary but i'm still in this business i'm still doing it i imagine that that you know that that will that will shift over time so um so let me try to let me try to sum it up and, and then i'm going to come and see what y'all are saying um gratitude for where you are right now not looking back and wishing you had what you once had it's a waste of time unless you're just doing it for the sweetness of the of the you know the nostalgia of it and a sense of gratitude for it. But the kind of like, oh, I wish it was like that. I wish it was now like it used to be. Mm, like, don't live there too long. What did, what did Lady Gaga say? Look back, but don't stare. Look back, don't stare. My friend Carrie turned me on to that. It's a great, uh, it's a great piece of advice. <laughs> Uh-oh, did I freeze? I think I froze for a second. Um, yeah, look back, but don't stare. Um, don't look too far ahead um, and worry about what has not transpired yet. Be present right now and grateful for, for what you have, struggles and all, because there's opportunity for growth in the struggle. And then looking to your career, apply the same things, right? Gratitude um, for what you have. Um, know what it is. Seek out intentionally what it is that you're good at not bemoaning the, all the things you can't read for because you've grown older, um, that you don't fit anymore, right? Um, be intentional about, about knowing and understanding what it is that you do well and then seeking opportunities in, in that, right? Um, and then diversifying, diversify what you do. Um, again, you know, uh, uh, I don't do as much commercial work as I used to. It used to be the only thing I did. I don't do as much promo work as I used to. I still do promo, um, but it shifts. It shifts. I have a particular promo sound, and the promo sound of today is different than what I do. So there are still some channels, you know, that, that kind of allow for that. Um, uh, affiliate stuff is good for a person like me um, because it tends to be an older school read, you know. Um, and... So I've just moved myself into additional areas where work is, uh, work is alive and I can, uh, and I can do it, you know? So, uh, I hope all that made sense. Um, great adapting. So true. We are of a different culture. Indeed we are. Um, I don't know why this won't let me scroll. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, Let's see. Oh, it won't let me scroll. That's so weird. Um, yes, gratitude. Our children always grow up in a different culture. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, yeah. 20-year-olds 20, 20 can't play the roles I can. Jeff, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. I remember being in my 20s and thinking I really wanted to do all these sort of, you know, 
authoritative announcers that I just loved, you know, it's like, I loved listening to Diane Pershing and Lynette Meddy and Tress McNeil. And I just loved the, they had such authority in their voice and, and they, yet they were just, I don't know, they were just, they were perfect to me. I just wanted to be them and do what they did. Well, I didn't have enough maturity in my voice and I certainly didn't have enough maturity in my years, you know, so I couldn't do it. I couldn't do what they were doing. It was something I looked forward to. And so, um, and so now I get to do it, you know, now I get to do it. And it, and again, it's not like I do so much of it, but I'm right for it. So I'm in the mix, you know, and that is a very, very gratifying feeling to be in the mix. So, um, I think I don't see any more questions or anything like that. Um, uh, my dog is getting a little barky. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to head out and leave you with all that. And just know that, you know, every age is a privilege. Every age that we attain is a privilege to be here and, um, you know, take care of yourself and be good to yourself and look at what's possible. Look what you can do rather than looking on the, on the, other side of that, what you can't, right? Or where th that it's not wise for you to do, or it doesn't make sense for you to do, right? Look at what you can do. I'm never going to change my voice. It is what it is. It has served me well, gave me a great career in my 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, still going. It's just a different career, right? So I will leave you with that. And um, as always, find me wherever you can. I'm all over social media. Um, if you are not a part of, if you're not on my email list, please feel free to go and sign up, trustandbebrave.com. You can also find it uh, on kbest.com. Here comes the barking. Um, come here, Stella. Oh my goodness. Um, send me a question wherever you may. You can always post one um, in the comments here if you're coming to this uh, after it's posted. Um, please feel free to participate and comment because it lives and, and people will see it. So um, thank you so much. Have a great uh, day and the rest of your week. I will not be with you next Wednesday. We will skip next Wednesday because I'm flying back from Los Angeles to uh, Nashville. So I'll see you the week after. All right. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Ciao.